Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good day to you. Khuyamoro, Mawene, and welcome to Life Matters Health. This week we are celebrating World Breastfeeding Week and shining a light on the importance of breastfeeding support and education. Joining me today is two incredible guests in the field, Sister Rueda Ishmamula, an independent midwife specialist, registered nurse and nurse educator, as well as Sadia Sayed, a doula ECD lecturer and breastfeeding consultant. Together we will explore the world of breastfeeding, breastfeeding rather, share some expert advice and inspire confidence in new mothers. Together we will cover the power of breastfeeding in Breastfeeding Unplugged Expert Insight and Stories. Now let's welcome Sister Dueda and Sadia to the show, who's taking a break from catching babies for now and taking time to talk to us today. Assalamu alaikum and thanks so much for joining us. Let's start with Sister Dueda. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, It's wonderful to be on and uh, to welcome uh, for having me here. Only a pleasure chatting to you. And uh, as we saw earlier, Sadia, thank you so much for taking time out. We appreciate it. Uh, Assalamu alaikum to you, Sadia. Mm -hmm. Shukran, for having me once again. Shukran so much for joining us, guys. So if I could start with you, uh, Sister Dueda, please highlight the importance of breastfeeding education. You're in the industry, you're in the field, the correct information when it comes to uh, breastfeeding and overall wellness for breastfeeding moms. The Breastfeeding um, Education Week is this week and it's there to celebrate the you know, breastfeeding itself and everything that the moms are putting into it. It's also to acknowledge the importance of breastfeeding, uh, to demystify the myths surrounding um, the stories and the, you know, what people tell you it's um, to give the moms evidence-based information so that they can learn what and uh, benefit what's uh, the best out there for them and themselves. And uh, it's a reminder of the importance that there is in the breastfeeding society and the advantages they are. So why would we exactly need to highlight breastfeeding? Um, in your opinion, when it comes to, you know, the rest of the support, the partners, uh, how do they play a role in understanding, you know, the importance of breastfeeding, uh, Sister Rueda? I think that breastfeeding, um, well, according to the World Health Organization, we want it to be as high as can be, mm. but we're sitting with the statistics of under 60% of moms that are breastfeeding their little ones. And I think a lot is education-based and partners don't know how to support them. Uh, culturally, they get conflicting advice from family members as well. So they don't know which is um, which they should take. And then under pressure and without support, fail to continue breastfeeding. Hmm. And many people don't know that there's actually breastfeeding support groups or, um, you know, midwives or lactation consultants, doulas that can offer breastfeeding support. And that is where we want to come in and bring um, that into the community to understand the importance and, and to help them establish continuation of breastfeeding. Mm. So I think if I could bring you in now, Sadia, what are some surprising, surprising rather, that we don't re sometimes realize benefits of breastfeeding for both mom and baby? And I think in that light, you can also stress the importance of breastfeeding week. Okay. Um, so breastfeeding has numerous benefits for both mothers and babies. And I'm happy to share with you some surprising benefits. So it, it boosts your baby's immune system. So breast milk contains antibodies that um, protect babies from infections and diseases. It lowers the risk of SIDS. So breastfeeding has been shown to reduce the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. Um, it helps with weight loss. So we know that's a huge thing with mums during postpartum. So breastfeeding can aid in postpartum weight loss and reduce the risk of obesity. 
Um, it reduces stress. So when a mom is breastfeeding, she gives off a hormone called oxytocin, also when she's laboring and giving birth. So oxytocin is re uh, released during breastfeeding, and this promotes relaxation. It reduces her stress levels, and that in turn then, you know, would help with her postpartum depression, etc. Um, it lowers the risks of breast and ovarian cancer. So breastfeeding has been linked to um, reduce the risk of breast and ovarian cancer in mothers. Um, it also improves the baby's brain development. So um, breast milk contains fatty acids that support brain growth and development. Um, it also supports uh, mother and, and baby bonding. So in the golden hour, uh, we have on skin to skin immediately after baby is born. And when the baby is doing skin to skin, we then try and facilitate breastfeeding to happen during that time because the skin to skin contact and physical closeness during breastfeeding foster a strong bond between the mother and the baby. Um, it helps with the, the uterus shrinking. So um, we know that all moms want the uterus to go back into place after birth. So uh, breastfeeding can help with the uterus return uh, back to its pre-pregnancy size uh, much more quicker than uh, a mom that doesn't breastfeed. It also reduces the risk of postpartum depression. So breastfeeding has been shown to lower the risk of postpartum depression in mothers. And also it's um, an environmental friendly. So breast milk production requires no packaging, no transportation, no waste. Um, it's, it's, it's an eco-friendly choice. But also remember that support is very, very important. Like Sister Rueda mentioned, um, your midwife, your healthcare provider, your doula, your lactation consultant. So seek good advice. So seek advice when wanting to breastfeed your baby. And your journey doesn't only start after your baby is born. Um, getting good, adequate information in your pregnancy, in your prenatal classes is of utmost importance to help you achieve a good breastfeeding journey with your baby. So I like that last one um, because I'm a bit of a green mother. Uh, Eco-friendly is uh, breastfeeding tick uh, number one for me. Sister, um, at least Sadia, I just quickly want you to elaborate on the, the golden hour. I uh, heard you mention that. What, what exactly is that? Exp explain to us. Um, so there's a three different stages. So there's four different stages of labor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So where we have the latent phase, we have the active phase, and then we have the phase where the baby is then engaged and the mother needs to birth, etc. Yeah. And then we have the golden hour. So in the golden hour, this is your first hour after your baby is born. So in that hour, we pr promote delayed cord clamping. Uh, we promote skin to skin contact, and then we promote. Um, breastfeeding. So if a mom establishes breastfeeding during her golden hour, we find that she has a more successful, there's more successful breastfeeding rates. So what, what we usually do and why we promote the skin to skin and breastfeeding in the golden hour is because it almost mimics the womb. So like when the baby was in utero, the baby would hear the, the mom's heartbeat, uh, feel the warmth of the amniotic fluid, um, feel the rhythm of the mom's breathing. So when the baby's born and we place the baby on the mom's chest to do skin to skin, even on the dad's chest to do skin to skin, it almost, almost mimics the womb. So the baby can hear the heart rate, the baby can, the baby's uh, body temperature then regulates and also the baby can feel the rhythm of the breathing. So this automatically just relaxes the baby and calms the baby down after baby's born. So skin to skin contact after baby's born is of utmost importance in the golden hour. I want to look at some essential nutrients uh, for breast meat, breastfeeding mothers rather. Uh, Sister Duweda, could you please expound on you know the important whether it is nutrients, the vitamins, the right types of food breastfeeding mothers should have, and how can they incorporate that into their diet? A lot of moms who get pregnant uh, are already on the supplementation, and that is the iron and calcium and the omegas. And the reason that they have this is because um, calcium is good for baby's bone development and teeth. The omegas are excellent in terms of brain, baby's brain development. And then iron stores are depleted in the mom as well. And that also, um, you know, the baby is going to extract everything that the baby needs from the mom. 
in order to grow. Now, the same thing applies after birth. Mm. So many moms, after they give birth, forget that they were healthy in pregnancy, and that, unfortunately, is um, where they start feeling weak and tired and having hair loss even a few months after they give birth. So they need to continue either with their supplementation. And some moms don't have, um, they can't afford it. Affordability is a bit of a problem. And, you know, we are, we have everything in South Africa in terms of our food sources that we can incorporate. So with your calcium, it's your milk that moms need to increase. And, and broccoli, I know many people don't like the taste of certain foods and that will, um, you know, limit them from having it. But try and think of fun ways to cook it. So broccoli, if you want to have it with some white sauce and cheese, you know, we could have that. So you're having your calcium sources. You also have dark green leafy vegetables or your legumes like your beans and your dal. Um, and I know they say you don't have dals after birth as well because of gas and wind. So you have maybe your... um almonds, which is a high source of your calcium and your, your iron intake as well. Um, increase your, your fluid content. And one of the things I'd like to um, reinforce is each time a mom breastfeeds, she must try and have a fluid replacement. So in order to make this amount of breast milk, she needs to increase her fluid intake. Um, and a good way of doing it is each time you breastfeed, have something to drink as well. The, um, so you can have your clear fluids, your soups, your milk in the morning. Try and have a bit of um, milk cereal in the morning. Add a bit of nuts if you can. Try and decrease on the unnecessary or unhealthy sugars like um, chocolate. Dark chocolate is a healthier chocolate if you do a crave for it, and especially for moms who are diabetic. So decrease your um, your sugars. Okay. Have decrease obviously your smoking and your alcohol because that does um, transfer over into breast milk as well. You want to so your alcohol uh, based medication. You would try and stay away from that as well, um, and. You can have caffeine. So lots of people think that they can't have a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee is fine. But you try not to have a cup of coffee and a Red Bull and a Coke. And, you know, so your, your content okay. of caffeine is yeah. increased because you want to limit your caffeine intake as well. And if you want a cup of coffee more than once, have decaffeinated coffee. Um, and then with your omegas, you want to increase your sardines and your mackerel and you know, many women that stay away from sushi crave for that uh, seafood after. So try and have that and incorporate it into your diet. So you don't necessarily have to take a supplement. And there are many, many supplements on the market. Um, and, and cereal-based medication, um, you know, mixtures that you can take. But you don't need to buy things over the counter if it's not affordable to you. Okay. What you need to do is get the, the fresh food okay. and try and have it. So have, have a healthy meal. And one of the very important factors are moms are so busy with breastfeeding that they forget to eat. Mm. It's yes. vital that you still have your try and have three balanced meals a day okay. and in between try and snack. So you want to have breakfast, lunch and dinner okay. and a fruit and a yogurt in between or crackers and cheese. And then remember with each feed, you want to increase your um, fluid intake as well. Okay. And even at night, at night when you breastfeed, you become extremely thirsty. So have your water next to your bedside so that you can hydrate as well. Yeah, I find that just the having that bottle of water with you and beside you reminds you. Uh, we forget so quickly nowadays. Thank you so much, Mr. Dueda. When we get back, we talk about the impact on our nutrition via the baby's gut health and the immune system when it comes to breastfeeding. More after the short break. Do stay with us. Did you know that studies have found that mothers' and babies' brains actually synchronize during breastfeeding? 
or what happens to a mother's body and mind when she's breastfeeding. Welcome back. Now let's support every breastfeeding mom in Life Matters today, a health edition of Breastfeeding Week, where we celebrate the journey of nurturing life as we continue to honor the power of love and nourishment that flows from a mother's heart to her child. World well, Breastfeeding Week is a reminder of the incredible impact that breastfeeding has on our children's health, their development, and their well-being. So let's continue to explore the beauty, challenges, and triumphs of breastfeeding, as well as discover the ways in which to shape our relationships our communities and our world through breastfeeding. We thank so much our guests, uh, Sister Duweda, as well as uh, Sadia online. Uh, let's get back to nutrition again and how the baby's gut health is affected. I think, um, Sister Sadia, if I could start with you again, how does breastfeeding impact a baby's gut health and the immune system? Okay, so um, I always tell the mums that a well-balanced diet rich in nutrients supports uh, milk production and nourishes both mother and baby. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you some key components on how to start off with, with a good diet, firstly, when trying to breastfeed your baby. So making sure that you stay hydrated, okay? Um, plenty of water. So I always tell my mums three to four liters of water per day, and they always question them to say, how am I going to get 18 to 4 liters of water per day? So ideally, a mom feeds a baby 8 to 10 times in a day. If you're feeding 8 to 10 times in a day, and you're having a glass of water before feed, a glass of water after feed, that will equal to your 3 to 4 liters of water um, per day. Uh, so rich, pro rich food in proteins, so include like your lean meats, your fish, your eggs, your legumes, your nuts, um, that supports uh, your milk production. Um, like Rueda said, it's very, very important to incorporate um, protein-rich foods. So your complex uh, carbohydrates, your whole grains, your fruits, your vegetables, that, that provides your energy and your fiber for your baby, healthy fats. So your nuts, your avocados, your olive oil, that supports baby's brain development um, and as well as hormone production. And then we have our calcium-rich foods, which is our dairy, leafy greens, um, your fortified plant-based milk support um, that helps with your baby's bone health, etc. So, your the baby's gut is obviously developing because in utero uh, your baby was fed via the umbilical cord, via the placenta. Mm. So when a mom breastfeeds her baby, it strengthens the baby's gut. It, the gut becomes more healthier. Also, breast milk is much more easier to digest. So um, it's, it's much more easier than formula. Obviously, there is a place for formula if a mom is unable to, to breastfeed. But if a mom is able to breastfeed, then it's extremely important that um, she does breastfeed her baby because it helps the baby's gut develop. Um, it protects the baby's immune system. It protects the baby from sicknesses and illnesses, as well as um, such an amazing um, thing that I, I learned um, in my studies is that when the baby is ill, when the baby is sick, um, and the baby latches onto the mom's breast, so whatever whatever the baby has, whatever illness or whatever, whether it's a flu, whatever it may be, whatever the baby has, sort of goes back into the baby's breast milk, and then the mom then makes antibodies in her breast milk. She produces antibodies in her breast milk that then goes back to her baby. Um, so I thought that was um, absolutely, uh, absolutely amazing fact uh, that breast milk actually, um, you know, it helps with, with regards to your baby's immune system, your baby's gut, and helping your baby also um, sort of recover much more quicker from whatever sickness or whatever illness they might have. So iron rich foods, your mega fatty acids, your vitamin D rich foods, probiotics. So remember, whatever you, you put into your system, you're giving out. So whatever you're putting into your body, that's that's what you're going to ideally then, then give to your baby. So healthy yeah. eating, staying hydrated is extremely important. And yes, again, getting good support when breastfeeding your baby so that you have a successful breastfeeding journey. I, I also did come across that fun fact uh, recently of how, you know, just breastfeeding the baby both heals you 
and your baby, but there's medical science behind that as well. So thanks, uh, Sadia, for sharing that. So Sister Rueda, with regards to the breast milk composition, understanding all of those nutrients, understanding the gut health, understanding the immune system of, of that baby, let's talk about the unique properties of breast milk composition. With all that was said with regards to the diet and baby, does that now mean because you're not getting enough iron, for instance, or enough calcium in your diet, your breast milk composition is going to be different from another mother that does? You know, we are so uniquely made, and that's what it comes down to when it comes down to breastfeeding. A malnourished mom will provide exactly what the baby needs in a malnourished area. And even though she might be not consuming the high iron sources, they say that she, for example, will make the highest uh, content of breast milk because that's what is needed at that time. Mm. So if the breast is um, high in HMOs and that uh, lactobacillus and all the fancy names that you get in it, and everything stems from gut health, like I just said, and in order to uh, babies have a good gut health, they're able to fight a lot with the immune uh, the immune system is becomes also a step, good established and able to to um, fight the diseases or illnesses because they don't have very strong immunity when they're born. Um, the composition changes. That's the other magnificent thing about breast milk is it changes from morning to evening and from day to day. So what a mom is producing the first day of her breastfeeding life. She might not necessarily be producing that exact same competition when the baby turns a year old. Um, so initially the baby is fed with colostrum um, and that is when the baby's tummy is as size as a little pea or cherry and the baby's tummy needs to grow if you can see those images from the tiny little one to the big ball. And as the baby's tummy grows, um, the composition of the milk changes as well. So your first three days, the mom would have colostrum, which is high in immunity to be able to help the baby fight that, uh, um, build the immune system. They also not very high in uh, vitamin D and vitamin K. So a lot of times the moms do get vitamin D uh, supplementation or vitamin K, the baby gets at birth. Um, the other thing with the uh, gut system is the baby gets all of this and they have to develop their own gut health. And uh, formula fed babies are given, um, that's where the difference is they don't understand or be able to distinguish how to develop good gut health and that kind of breaks the gut health. Unfortunately, formula does break the gut health in terms of developing that immunity. So, for example, uh, HIV uh, positive mom, if she breastfeeds her baby without any formula or without any other fluid entering that gut, her baby will not be uh, HIV positive if she has a low viral load. Um, so that's how important it is. Breast milk is high in, in, in fluids. So a lot of people say that you need to give your baby water if you're breastfeeding, and that's untrue because there's 80% water constituent in the breast milk. Uh, it's high in fat, it's high in nutrients, it's high in iron. Um, and it, it changes from morning to evening. So a baby, if you, for example, had to express breast milk at night and express breast milk in the day, your breast milk at night would be high in melatonin. And that's why we say try and label and mark your milk when you breastfeed, when you express. Okay. Because if you express milk at night, try and give that milk to the baby at night. Hmm. And if you breast, uh, express during the day, give that milk to your baby in the day. Because if you have to give your day milk to the baby at night, you might just wonder why the baby is wide awake. Wow. And that's because you don't have that melatonin. I, th I think, as a student, after having so many kids, I didn't realize that. That's a very interesting fact and a fun fact, in fact, for mothers to know. I'm going to just leave it. I know there's some more you would like to add with regards to the composition, but we just quickly need to pay the bills. And when we come back, we add to that um, what, what more interesting facts there are with regards to the composition of the breast milk. And then also some uh, advice around sleeping patterns and breastfeeding. More just after the short break. Do stay with us.
Wow, some interesting facts shared. So if you're going to be uh, expressing milk at nighttime, moms, please use that milk at nighttime. Welcome back to Health uh, Life Matters Health Edition. Um, as we delve into the world of breastfeeding, share expert advice, educate ourselves on how our own development was actually established through ones being breastfed and inspire the confidence in new mothers. So let's continue to uncover the power of breastfeeding with our two expert breastfeeding educators online, a midwife, uh, Sister Rueda, as well as practicing and teaching doula, uh, Sadia Sayed. Thanks so much guys for joining us. I think Sadia, I want to latch on you as a breastfeeding consultant. How do you advise moms uh, with regards to the effects of the sleeping pattern? Because of course, breastfeeding does affect their sleeping patterns. I mean, I have a sister right now who's, uh, who's breastfeeding and all I hear, shame, is how tired she is. What tips can you share for getting enough rest for breastfeeding moms? Okay, um, so getting enough rest while breastfeeding is crucial for milk production. It's extremely important that, you know, a mom recovers um, her, men, her mental well-being is, is extremely important as well as her physical well-being. So sleep when your baby sleep. I, I always tell the moms, take advantage of your baby's naps to catch up on your sleep. Um, establish your bedtime routine. So encourage your partner, a support person, whether it's your mom, whether it's your sister that you have with you. Mm -hmm. So help them have, have them help you with nighttime feeds and baby care. So even if it's just, um, changing the baby's bottoms or burping your baby or, you know, after you fed, hand your baby over to your partner so that you can go back to sleep and then they can break your baby's wing, change your baby's nap, etc. That, that makes a huge difference. Um, take turns with your partner. So alternate nights of feeding to allow each other to rest. So if the mom finds that she's mentally, physically, emotionally exhausted, there's no harm in in um, expressing milk. So you can express and then cup feed your baby if you don't want your baby to have nipple confusion, etc. Or you could put it in a bottle where your baby, where your partner can just give your baby one feed with the bottle, which won't cause nipple confusion, if it's only one feed at night, just so that the mom can regroup and get her strength, get her energy back, and then go back to, you know, after she's well rested, after she's feeling mentally, physically, and emotionally okay, go back to her baby. Because I always say it's so important for a mom to be in a good space. It's so important for a mom to be okay in order to take care of her baby. And if it means getting help, if it means getting assistance, if it means expressing milk, putting it in the bottle, cup feeding your baby, just so that you can get some sleep, just so that you can get some rest, to feel human again, to feel whole again and go back um, it makes such a huge difference to your newborn and and you know how how you you move forward. So napping with your baby, so lie down with your baby during the day, um, that helps to get some extra rest. Asking for help, so reach out to your family and friends or postpartum doula um, to help with just household tasks and baby care, just simple tasks, just to, to make your life a little bit easier. So prioritize self-care. For me, this is huge. Taking breaks, just to read a book, maybe watch a movie, enjoy a warm bath, just relax. You know, self-care is very, very important. Um, feeding with support. So consider having like a breastfeeding pillow or your baby pillow that you can use or just a normal pillow from your bed. So we find that when a mom uses a pillow during support, it allows your arms to rest, it allows your back to rest, so you're not putting strain on your body when you're breastfeeding, you're having a comfortable feed, your baby feels, your baby senses that you're comfortable, your baby feels much more better when when the mom is more comfortable. Um, limit visitors, okay? It's important to set boundaries. Um, everybody means well. Everybody wants to see your baby. Everybody wants to visit your baby. But if it's not, if it, if it doesn't make you feel comfortable or you're not getting adequate rest mm -hmm. because you constantly have visitors and you constantly have people coming in to see your baby, gently say, you know, um, I just need to rest today, maybe tomorrow, maybe another day. And I mean, people, people will understand that you're a new mom and it's okay and they can see your baby at a later stage. So limiting your visitors is very, very important. Um, take advantage of nighttime help. So if possible, have a night nurse, um, have a doula, 
have um, your mom, have your husband help you with, with nighttime help so that you can have rest and be flexible. Don't stress about a full night's sleep. A full night's sleep with your new mom is out the window. Yeah. So rest when you can. Take breaks throughout the day. And remember, um, rest is essential for breast production, your mood regulation and overall health. So don't hesitate to ask for help when you yeah. need it. Yeah, be firm and if you can't do it, ask your partner, your husband to do it. Get mommy in and have her be a security guard when it comes to visitors. But Sister Dueda, we spoke earlier about some very, very important mm -hmm. facts when it comes to milk, um, milk composition. Uh, what, what other facts would you like to add with regards to that and also some strategies for breastfeeding at night and how partners can support their new moms? Um, so one of the other things I wanted to say is your milk, um, just to end with that, mm. to the moms that are breastfeeding, um, your milk is good enough. Mm. And that's one of uh, the concerns that many moms have. Are they getting their babies sufficient nutrition? Are they starving their babies? And I just want them to know that your milk is always enough mm -hmm. and you're never going to give birth and have a gushing head down. It's only going to develop on the third or fourth day and that is absolutely normal. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of sleep, wear things that are comfortable. So when you're sleeping, easy access to lift up and breast your breast feed your babies. Um, so I just covered a lot of the things that involve comfortable sleeping and developing a good sleeping routine. Um, I always tell moms to wear their babies. So get something that they can strap their babies onto them. You know, um, a sling, a scarf that you can use two pieces or three pieces of scarf and tie your baby onto you so your baby maintains skin to skin contact and listens and feels your heartbeat. And if the baby is calm and content, they sleep longer. Uh, a lot of the, the myths out there is uh, don't hold your baby and keep your baby on you too long because you're spoiling your baby. Mm. And I always tell the moms, you've walked with your baby for nine months and rocked your baby for nine months. And at night when you lie down, the baby kicked you to tell you to rock your baby again. <laughs> so don't think that's going to change when you give birth. Yeah. Um, so wear your baby, hold your baby, let your baby feel that calmness. And that is what helps and develops a good sleep routine. And when you're feeding at night, don't talk to the baby. As much as you love their cute little faces, try not to overstimulate your baby at night because at that point in time, they don't know what's day and night. Yeah. So keep them lights on when you're breastfeeding and try not to stimulate your baby when, when feeding at night. I, I relate to that because, like I said earlier, my, my sister's breastfeeding and she says a little one is the cutest at night and her eyes are wide open and she has to stop herself from talking to a little baby because she also wants to sleep and not, and not overstimulate. So I relate to that. Um, I think, Sister Sade, if I could bring you in quickly and understand, uh, at least address the concerns about low milk supply, lat latching issues or even pain during breastfeeding. I just... Uh, briefly, if you could discuss it, and also just make us understand the the, the initial um, supply of milk. I've heard also some myths and misconceptions around not um, not expressing during the first week or two because your milk is still being established. Just uh, uh, guide us around these um, concerns. Okay, so uh, low milk supply and uh, latching issues can be stressful, but. There is, there is certain things that we can do that we can establish to, to help a, a low milk supply. So frequent feeding, uh, nurse your baby often, so 8 to 12 times in 24 hours to stimulate your milk production. Proper latch, ensure a good latch to help your baby effectively re remove the milk. Um, when we put our baby to the breast um, and the baby's tongue rubs up against the areola, that's how um, our brain receptors then say, okay, this mom needs to produce milk. So every time we put our baby to the breast, your milk is then um, sort of, then you produce more milk. So every time you feed, you're producing more milk. Skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact, again, hold your baby close to promote hormone release um, and, and it supports your milk production. So keep your baby, like Prabhupada said, keep your baby close to you, hold your baby close because this produces 
all the right hormones in order to reduce, reduce I mean, release um, your lactating hormones. Hydration, so drinking plenty of water, eight to 10 glasses of water per day, three to four liters of water per day. Um, try food or supplements that like oatmeal, fenugreek, um, your rooibos tea. So again, healthy eating, staying hydrated is of utmost importance. Um, pumping, so we're not going to pump in the first two to three weeks unless your baby's premature and your baby's in the neonatal ICU and you have to send milk to the ICU, etc. But you will ideally wait two to three weeks before you start expressing. Unless you have engorged breast, then we do um, ask the mums to hand express with warm compress, etc. Um, Express milk after feeds to stimulate your production and relieve engorgement. So this would be hand expressing. Um, consult with a lactation consultant. So get personalized guidance to address your underlying issues. Again, get get proper help. And for for correct breastfeeding, what we need to do is proper positioning. So okay. hold your baby close, with their mouth aligned, skin to skin, tummy to tummy nose in line with the tip of your areola. So there's certain things, there's certain ways that we need to latch your baby on in order for baby to get adequate milk when a baby's feeding. Okay. Um, supporting your baby's head. So help your baby maintain a comfortable position when breastfeeding. Uh, it's important for the mom to be in a comfortable position when she's breastfeeding. So I know when a baby starts crying, the mom just sits in any position, she grabs her baby so that her baby can stop crying. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is getting in a comfortable position for the mom to get in a comfortable position, have her back supported, have her back upright, supporting her baby, supporting her baby's head is of utmost importance when she's she's latching her baby on, okay? So latch assistance. So gently help your baby to latch by, by guiding their mouth to your nipple. So we always say that um, if you don't support your baby's body correctly and you don't support your baby's head correctly, it's like trying to drink a glass of water and being on a skateboard. It's it's not possible. Yeah. It's it's you know, it's not humanly possible to do this. And when we don't give our baby correct support, when breastfeeding them, they don't get adequate milk and the mom then doesn't produce enough milk because the baby's not stimulating the breast properly. So a latch is very, very important. Okay. Um, burp and relatch. So if your baby comes off the breast, try to relatch your baby after burping. And uh, one important thing is monitoring for tongue tie. So if the baby has a tongue tie, consult with your pediatrician or professional to assist with um, further treatment. So usually the pediatrician or your midwife or your gynecologist might check your baby for tongue ties or your lactation consultant after birth. And if there is a tongue tie, then they would advise you correctly uh, and what steps to take further, etc. Um, seek professional help. So consult a lactation consultant, breastfeeding specialist, okay. get personalized guidance. It's, it's extremely important that we get good support to, uh, when wanting to breastfeed our babies. And remember, every baby is unique. Yeah. Um, and it may take time to find the right combination of solutions. Just be patient and don't don't hesitate to seek support. There's lots of support out there. There's lots of guidance out there for moms that would like to breastfeed your babies. And like I say, we prepare for our pregnancies. We prepare for our birth. It's just as important for us to prepare when we want to breastfeed our babies. Important advice uh, guiding us through this breastfeeding week is uh, uh, Sister Duweda and uh, breastfeeding consultant uh, Sadia Sayed. More after the short break, we discuss some cultural and society's misconceptions about breastfeeding. Do stay with us and don't forget to interact with us on our social media pages as well. Back in a moment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back and thank you so much for joining us on this journey into the heart of breastfeeding. Remember that every drop, drop of milk, every moment of that connection and every triumph over challenges is a testament to the boundless love and strength of our mothers who made the decision and sacrifice for breastfeeding. 
and of course all those mothers around the world breastfeeding as well. We appreciate those mothers who weren't also able to breastfeed and uh, think about them. With this, we understand and continue to support, empower and celebrate each other in this journey of nurturing life with uh, Sister Rueda and Practicing Doula online with us. I want to get back to understanding, you know, any myths and misconceptions, cultural and societal uh, misconceptions about breastfeeding. And Sister Rueda, I'd like to um, direct this question to you. How can we promote a more supportive environment? So in terms of support, um, involve the couple, involve the family, involve the, the partner. Sorry, sorry, Sister um, Rueda, there was just a bit of um, disturbance on the one side. Could you just start over no, your answer? Could you we're just... going to support not myths yet. Oh, no, no, at this, the cultural and societal misconceptions. Oh, misconceptions, okay. Yeah. Okay, so when you're ready, you can answer. So in terms of misconceptions, that's one of the biggest um, things that actually cause for failure in terms of breastfeeding. Yeah. Um, because we value our elders' words more than anything and sometimes not necessarily the healthcare practitioner. Mm. Um, one of the things is that formula is just as good as breast milk mm -hmm. and that's the biggest myth because through all the years of formula um, composition, they still not able to develop half or even a quarter of the um, micronutrients that exist in breast milk, and they're not able to even mimic a quarter of what is in your breast milk, and breast milk is ever-changing, and no one can mimic that, so no formula is definitely not as good as uh, breast milk. The other misconception is that you don't have enough, and the more you feed your baby, the more you have your milk production increase. And that's the only way that the milk flow comes in. So you will have enough with care and guidance. And if you don't, then you please seek out lactation support. The other biggest misconception, and that's probably an advantage to my practice, is that many women think they can't fall pregnant when breastfeeding. So I have many repeat clients because that's <laughs> highly untrue. It um, Yes, your prolactin level increases when you're breastfeeding, mm. so you don't ovulate. But once that prolactin level starts decreasing, you have a chance of ovulation again, yeah. and you can fall pregnant even if you are breastfeeding. Um, the other one is that if you're working and you go back to work, you have to stop breastfeeding. And you don't, you just need to get the support that you uh, that we can provide for you to give you the tips and the trades on how to continue breastfeeding and expressing when you do go back to work. Yeah. Um, the other one is that your breast milk is not nutritious enough, and that's also untrue. Um, so your breast milk is very nutritious. Your breastfeeding hurts or breastfeeding is easy. And that is uh, very individually based. So it is, you know, each person will experience something very different to the other. Mm. And the challenges are very unique to every breastfeeding mom, depending on um, inverted nipples yeah. and mastitis and all of that. So everyone's challenges is completely different. And one of the biggest things, if your baby is jaundiced, you, you need to stop breastfeeding. Mm. Um, and that's not true. You can continue breastfeeding. You just need to breastfeed a lot more often to flush the baby system out. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the, that's the, the few biggest misconceptions that's out there. Sorry about this idea, but we have to catch, uh, it's, it's a bit, uh, we're a bit short for time, so I'm going to ask you quickly in, in your last words uh, for today, if you can maybe assist us with, uh, or viewers, with any resources that are available for breastfeeding support and how we can connect, especially to new mothers, um, in, especially to new mothers rather, in outlying rural areas that need this information and also have your last words on this topic. So the is... Lots of resources available um, with regards to support with breastfeeding. So lactation consultants, um, certified professionals providing personalized uh, guidance and support, 
And then we have the Lalish League. It's a global organization offering breastfeeding support, resources. They have local meetings, etc. We have the World Health Organization who provide evidence-based uh, breastfeeding information and resources. Uh, we have the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. They also um, offer breastfeeding guidance. Um, we also have breastfeeding hotlines, your midwives, your doulas, um, your care providers. And my last words to mom is that plan on breastfeeding or breastfeeding, you're doing a great job. Breastfeeding can be challenging, but you're doing your best, and that's something to be proud of. Uh, your body is amazing. It's capable of nourishing and sustaining a tiny human being. Um, every feed counts, even if it's a few drops. Your milk is precious and valuable to your baby. You're not alone. Many moms have been in your shoes and or put a bit on the other side. Um, it's okay to seek help from a breastfeeding consultant, etc. Your baby loves you and they love your milk you're providing, no matter how much or how little. Um, it's important to celebrate small victories. Every day, every feed, uh, every ounce of milk is a success. Remember, it's a journey. Breastfeeding has its ups and downs, but it's always worth it. You're, you're strong and capable. Trust your body. Keep going. You're making a difference to your baby's life with every single feed that you provide for your baby. Thank and you. remember, breastfeeding is a journey, and it's okay to take it one day at a time. And you've got this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh... Uh, uh, Sadia, rather. Uh, Sister Dueda, lastly from your side, I believe you're highlighting women's wellness at birth on fifth maternity home. Just tell us a little bit about that quickly in, in a minute. So every year we have an annual wellness program. Uh, we would like to encourage our women out there to please come in for screening for do, to do the annual pap smears. We only charge in lab fees, which is uh, no fees that birth control is taking at all. Uh, it's 125 grand just to run the pap smear. And even that will be uh, all the money that you are bringing in or that's utilized for running these tests will be uh, for sponsoring uh, borehole and water wells that to mums without fresh water out in Africa and out in Afghanistan and in line with the AMA initiative and that's what we're there for. We're also providing lactation support um, together with an NGO, A Thousand Days of Grace, so you can call in for lactation support and you can come in just for 100 grand. You can bring your babies for free weight checks to us, um, come in for massages if you're overwhelmed and you've had a fickle breastfeeding. Um, so just come in for support and we're here to provide support to all mums, especially during the month of August. Um, our team is ready to support you. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Dueda, as well as Sadia, for availing yourselves and sharing your invaluable insights on breastfeeding. Your expertise has provided us with a deeper understanding of this critical, critical aspect of breastfeeding, and I love the fun facts. Please do have a good day further, um, and shukran so much for your time. Assalamu alaikum, be well. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa for having us. Only a pleasure. Thanks thanks so much once again um, to our breastfeeding team that joined us uh, again. And all the best to Sister Rueda and her team on their Women's Wellness Project at a Birth on Fifth Birth Unit. Thank you for tuning in and for staying tuned into the power of breastfeeding expert insight and stories this edition. We hope you found today's conversation informative empowering and inspiring. A huge thank you to our guests, Sister Rueda and Sadia, for sharing the expertise and passion for breastfeeding support. Remember, breastfeeding is a journey and you're not alone, as our guests mentioned. Reach out to our guests or your local breastfeeding organizations for the guidance and support you need. Don't forget to book your pap smear and support the initiative to raise funds for clean water access. Until next time, stay empowered and keep nurturing life to create a supportive environment for everyone to thrive and benefit. Don't forget awareness, support and ed education are key to prioritizing breastfeeding wellness. Let's continue the conversation of supporting each other in our journeys towards growing a strong and independent Ummah that ultimately pleases our Creator. Join us next time in part four of our women's health series on nutrition, exercise and gut health with female wellness doctor Fozia High.
Until then, stay informed and stay holistically healthy, mind, body and soul. From the rest of the Life Matters team here in at Johannesburg Studios, wassalamu alaikum and goodbye for now.